the church say amen? amen happy father's day our title this morning is a faithful man a faithful man father's day 2012 let us open our bibles to the book of galatians and the third chapter Galatians 3 the book of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 6 once again our title is a faithful man Father's Day 2012 The book of Galatians, chapter 3, beginning with verse 6, we find these words. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Read chapter or verse 7 with me. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. How many of us are of faith? Amen. That should be every hand in the place. Amen. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, we walk by faith, say it with me, and not by sight. We have received our salvation by faith, not by sight, because none of us were around 2,000 years ago when Jesus walked the earth. Amen? We received our salvation by faith and not by sight, because we believe in what the gospel teaches us about Jesus. Amen? It is totally by faith that we are saved. We believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary. Amen? We believe that he walked this earth. Amen? We believe that he died on the cross, amen. We believe that he rose from the grave, amen. And how many of you were alive 2,000 years ago? We didn't see it. We weren't here, amen. And aren't you thankful that you're alive now and not back then? Amen. I would not have liked to live without cell phones. Amen. High-def TV, sports, amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so we are saved by, by faith. We believe even though we didn't see it. We weren't there, but we still believe. Amen? Amen. And so therefore, God lets us know that we are of faith and the same are the children of Abraham. In other words, because we believe God, just like Abraham believed God, we are of faith and we, another name for you, I know you know about the name Christian, child of God, but also the Bible calls us, say it with me, the children of Abraham. One more time, the children of Abraham. We are, once again, the children of Abraham because we are of faith. Verse 8 continues, And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentile, or Greek term, heathen. Now, church, he's talking about us. Okay? What? Yeah, we're the Gentiles. There's the Jews, those of Jewish origin, because Jesus was of Jewish origin. And then there's the heathen, or the Gentile. Pastor is a Gentile risen up from Portland. Amen? Where did you rise up from? Whatever city you came from, you are a Gentile. From what city? Yeah, sounds, sounds like a mess, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the state us Gentiles were in. Amen. We were void of God. And then we received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Can, can you say amen? amen? So, and the scripture foreseen that God would justify us and how did he justify us? Say it with me. Through faith. One more time. Through faith. He justified us through faith. 
preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. All nations. Because salvation came to the entire world through the seed of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How many of you have heard of those three names? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salvation came through the seed of Abraham. So finally, Paul concludes this little uh, dialogue here. He says, so then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Let's, men, let's, 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 let's talk about faith for a moment. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The title is a, a faithful man. A faithful man is a man of commitment. A man of commitment. When I was playing football a long time ago over at UPS, I understood quickly that in order to get the price, to run the race, and to get the price, that I had to be faithful to my commitment of being the best that I could be. Had to be faithful to that commitment. I want to be the best that I can be. How many of you brothers want to be the best that you can be? The best man that you can be. And so, during the summer months, when no one was watching, when all the football players went home, we were given handouts. And these handouts told us what we needed to do during the summer in order to be ready for fall camp. Now, one of the things that took place the very first day of, of, of fall camp is we had a 12-minute run. You had to run the track, run around for 12 minutes. And the goal was they expected the players to be able to run two miles in that 12 minutes. Somebody say amen if you understand. And so for those of us that were faithful to our commitment, we worked hard during the summer. We were faithful to our commitment. Men of God... You want to be faithful to your commitment to Jesus Christ. You want to work at it. You want to train. You want to develop good spiritual habits, good physical habits. You want to be committed to being the best Christian man that you can be. And I'm telling you, it takes training and it takes work. I'm 58 years old and I am still working to be the best Christian man that I can be. I will continue to strive to do better unto the Lord until the day I leave this earth. I, I want to keep running the race. I, I haven't. Pastor has arrived. No. I still want to do better as a Christian. I still want to read more. I still want to study more. I still want to pray more. I still want to serve more. That's my commitment. And so during the summer, those of us that understood being faithful to our commitment, being faithful to being the best football player we could be, also, men, being faithful to the team, being faithful to the big picture. See, all of us men and women, not only are we faithful and committed to our own household, but you're part of a bigger picture. You are a man of God in the army of the Lord. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are a member of the body of Christ. You are a soldier in the army of the Lord. You are his righteousness here on this earth. You're part of Team Jesus, men. It just isn't you, but it's you and the global picture of being a blessed servant in the army of the Lord. Amen? Being his representative here on this earth. So, each year, 
my four years playing college ball, we get there, and it's time for the 12-minute run. And men, you knew who had been faithful over the summer, and you quickly knew who had not been faithful over the summer. For those guys like me that worked hard during the summer, we finish that 12-minute run. It was easy. Two miles, boom, just clicked it off. You know, 11 minutes, 18 seconds, done. 11 minutes, 20 seconds. 11 minutes, 30 seconds. But, but most of us made it. We ran two miles in 12 minutes because we worked out during the summer. We were faithful and committed to the task at hand. Are all, men, are you hearing me today? And then there was the, 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 the players that were throwing up. I won't give a demonstration. Amen. I won't give you a visual today. <laughs> they were puking. We had men that were falling off the track, make it a mile and drop it. Then we had, we had the, the fellows that it was, it was supposed to be a 12-minute 12, uh, 12 run. Theirs was a 12-minute. <laughs> couldn't even pick their legs up. Why? Because they were not faithful during the summer. They were not committed to the task at hand. I want every man today to be the man like we were preparing for the football season that finished the 12-minute run and finished and completed the two miles in the time allotted. How do you do that? You do that by being in church, being in that Word, being in your prayer closet, and serving God, and serving God, and serving God. And men understand that, that integrity, integrity is not by your definition, but it's by God's definition. What is the definition of integrity? Don't let your own views get involved with that. Because then a man can begin to justify. He can begin to make excuses. He can begin to come up with, I'm a man of integrity as I'm smoking dope, laid up high, drunk all the time, not taking care of my family, but I'm a man of integrity. The definition of integrity always has to be according to what God states. Amen? And in this, with that commitment, preparing and do the things that we need to do, we will be called faithful men. Chevy mentioned integrity. Deacon Kelly mentioned at the finish line, hearing those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want every man in TCC to be a man of integrity. And I desire when I'm in heaven, and the men of TCC come through that, that, that uh, throne room and, and the Bible says that we will receive rewards, I want every man of TCC to hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So I, I want you to know that, that, that men, the Bible t- teaches very clear, not every man is going to hear that. That's not promised to every man. But it's promised to those that, like with the 12-minute run, do the things leading up to the finish line so you can reach your goal of being that man of faith. Can we say amen? Amen. All right, let's move on to our next point. We are blessed with faithful Abraham. For all the men today, how many of you are a blessing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A blessing. A blessing. We are blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham, as a man, was a blessing. He was a blessing to his family. He was a blessing to God. 
Abraham was a blessing to all the nations after him. Now, we understand with the help of, 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 of Sarah, we understand that there was a time that he did something that he should not have done. And he went ahead with the help of Sarah because Sarah's womb was barren at the time. And so Abraham slept with the bondwoman or with the servant. And, of course, another whole race of people came into existence. We know them as the Arabs. Okay, and to this day, you have conflict with the Jews and the Arabs. It's still going on to this day. You have Israel, and then, of course, you have all of its enemies, nations like, like uh, Iran, uh, Syria, and so on and so on. Okay, so you have Abraham, who through his seed was, is, was, is the father of two great nations the Jewish folks, as well as the Arabs. Then you have Father Abraham that is also the father of a third great nation, and it's called the children of God. It's called the Christians. Can you say amen? Because through Abraham also came Christianity. So, for all the men, understand then, as you live your life, just like Abraham was a blessing, you should desire to be a blessing, a blessing. I want to be a blessing. First of all, a blessing to God. So let's talk about that for a moment. Men, a desire that when God looks at you, he says, you're a blessing. Wow, I love what you're doing there on the earth. I, I, I eat that up. I love the fact that you're in church. I love the fact that you spend time with me. I love the fact that you have morals. I love the fact that you have standards. I love the fact that you are serving me. Amen? Amen. So men, every man, every woman, if you are a blessing to God, say amen. amen. A blessing to God. Two, a blessing to your fellow man. Now, a lot of folks say that this isn't important, but... We, we don't have time to go to the scripture, but we're going to expound on this for a moment. As Paul established the church at Corinth, they had lots of issues. The church at Corinth was filled with zeal, excitement. I mean, they were on fire for God, but they were unruly. You ever know somebody that's unruly? They love God, but they have issues. Amen? <laughs> they, they love the Lord, but there are issues there. And so at the church of Corinth, Paul did a teaching, and he told them that you got to be okay with God, but you also have to be okay with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Is anybody hearing me today? Is anybody hearing me today? you got to be all right with other people. If you and God are hooked up, but people in your own church can't stand you. Oh. Wow. Amen. And you and God are just, mm, you sit at the feet of God daily. But people in your own church are saying, mm-mm. Paul says, okay, that's not good. So he told the folks at Corinth, he says, you got to be able to, to, to get along with the other folks in your church. you got to be okay Godward and manward. Huge teaching. A lot, a lot of folks don't understand this. A lot of pastors won't touch this with a 10-foot pole. But I will. Because it's, it's part of the word. How can you be so godly, holy, but no earthly good? So Paul talks about this, you, you, and, and he's not talking about being okay with the heathens with outside the church. He's talking to the people within the church, the Corinthians. you got to be okay with each other. Amen? 
How is your relationship with the people in your church? Amen. See, you don't, you don't want brothers thinking, man, that brother's a knucklehead. Wow. When you see that brother coming, you know issues are on their way. Uh, brother's a walking issue. <laughs> That's not good, amen. <laughs> you don't want to be a walking issue. <laughs> amen. You want to come into your church and folks that know, hey, that's a quality brother. Amen. It's a man of integrity. It's good, good people. It's good. God word and man word. We got to be okay within the body of Christ. Amen. If you understand, give God a big praise. Huge. Amen. Big time teaching to the church at Corinth. So important because, again, it, it was a church with a lot of zeal, a lot of fire, a lot of excitement. But at the same time, that was a church that had issues. Had so many issues, Paul had to write two books to them. Amen. One book wasn't enough. He, he had to write them a second book. Amen. Everybody heard of 1 and 2 Corinthians? Yeah. God said, you got to go back and write again to them. You got stuff going on in that church. Amen. <laughs> And Paul had to travel there several times, kept going back there to, to, to get folks to, to, to understand. And, and one of the key points was, was it's, it's great, because a lot of these folks at Corinth, man, they were just so holy. But then on the earthly sense, they're tearing the joint up. Can you say amen? <laughs> All right, so, blessed with faithful Abraham, and being able to be A-OK with God, brothers, but also being able to be A-OK with your brothers and sisters in Christ in your church. Amen. If you understand, give God a big praise. Huge. All right, next. A man's example is passed down. Things are passed down. A man's example is passed down. All right, let's, let's use for a moment Deacon Kelly, who came up and spoke. Now, his two boys have seen the example of a godly man. His boys were born in the church, raised in the church, and still see their dad in the church. That example is passed down. Say it with me. That example is passed down. One more time. That example is passed down. All of us, men, me included, the example of our Christianity is passed down. The example of the importance of Sunday is passed down. The knowledge that Sunday is the Lord's day is passed down. The comprehension that we need to give God service on His day is passed down. I can give God a couple hours on Sunday is passed down. It is an example. Amen. Now, for a lot of men in this church, one of the reasons why I'm so proud of you is you did not have that example passed down to you growing up. Not all of the men here at TCC were, quote, raised in the church. I had the blessing. I was in church all the time, Sundays. I was in church at 9 in the morning for Sunday school. I was in church 11 o'clock service. I was in church 3 o'clock program. I was in church 6 o'clock Baptist training union. I was in church 7 o'clock at night for night service. 
We jumped back into our big battle wagon, nine passenger station wagon, went from Portland back to Vancouver. My dad would grab one child with this hand, another here, wrap another one up, and just throw us in bed like he had meat hooks. I don't know how many Sundays I slept with my clothes on, just get in bed, school tomorrow. Because we were wiped out, because we were in church all day Sunday. Anybody remember, any woman have that type of radio? In church all day Sunday. Wow. Every Sunday, dinner was over at Big Mama's house, fr fried chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, and back to that 5 o'clock service, and can't be late. Other times, we got a real treat. We got to go to McDonald's. <laughs> For a child, that was, the arches was, mm, that was great. That orange syrup, mm, throw that pop down. <laughs> so, I was raised with that example. But blessed are the men here today that did not have an example of a godly dad, did not have an example of what the Lord's Day meant, what Sunday meant, but today they are in church and setting that example for their household. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Way to go, brothers. Amen. Way to go. A man's example is passed down. All right. Next up. We leave behind men a spiritual legacy, just like Abraham. A spiritual legacy. We understand the physical part. We get all that. But let's close this out today by talking about a spiritual legacy. It starts with us being in church, and that legacy is passed on that the spiritual things and personal relationship with God and serving Him is of the utmost importance. And men, long after you and I shuffle off this planet and enter into paradise, your spiritual legacy will remain. You will be known not only in your church, but in your household. And from your household it goes out to parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, and sisters. And when you leave this earth, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, they will all know that you were a church person. You were in the house of the Lord. You believed in God. And I'm so proud that every man here today is developing that spiritual legacy. It will last Things that are done for God will last. We are promised that by Jesus himself. What we do for God is going to last. And I want you to know that he has the ability to make it last. Because with God, all things are possible. And so, men, I leave you with this final comment today. Keep your spiritual legacy going because it will echo throughout all eternity and it will remain as a permanent work here on this earth until Christ comes back again. Let's give God a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we give you thanks and praises for this 9 o'clock service. God, may this word stay with all your people today. May it bring forth wonderful fruit. And God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said together, amen and amen. Amen. Everybody, let's stand. Have a wonderful Father's Day. Have a wonderful week. Say it with me. For the Lord, he is good. And his mercy endure forever. Blessings were dismissed. It never runs out. It never runs out.